So I've got this really cool 3D printed mechanism that I made. Um, it's got two rotating plates on bearings. You can uh, see the bearings right there. And it's got this central part that does not rotate. It's fixed to the bolt. Um, so what we find is that if I rotate one plate, the other plate, not only does it rotate in the opposite direction, its motion is also amplified. Um, we find that it's on a four to one ratio. So for every uh, time this turns once, the uh, other plate rotates four times. So, Bob. Oh. And then it also works in reverse. If I rotate this plate, this one rotates uh, one rotation for every four rotations of the other one. So you'll probably, if I were to uh, ask you to bet on it, you'd probably say that it's a uh, gear mechanism or something. Um, so Once I take it apart, apart for you. I see. Hold up! That ain't no hot tub! So you might say, well, surely that central plate has something to do with it. There's some moving components in there. Nope. It's just a plate with bolts in it. So what we see is we see uh, a plate with four magnets on it and a plate with 16 smaller magnets on it. And then the central plate has got 10 bolts in it. So that 4 to 1 ratio comes from, um, obviously, 16 divided by 4. Um, and... The uh, crucial interaction is how this uh, central plate manipulates the magnetic fields of the uh, quote-unquote gears. Um, and I will show you a quick example of how it helped me to think about this. So I found it really helpful to think of these central bolts as uh, transmitters of sorts. That they take the field applied to one side of them. And transmit them to the other side so let's say we're looking at this bolt in particular if it's got a northern field here uh, from this gear that it's going to transmit a northern field to this side of the bolt um, and a really easy way to see that is if I take these two magnets one is on a bolt and one is not and then right here I've got a Tesla meter if I hold the probe of the Tesla meter about the length of the bolt away, just in open air, I see that the Tesla meter doesn't pick up anything. But if I hold it over the bolt, I see that the bolt does a much better job of transmitting that magnetic field to the probe. So it's reading a north polarity right now. If I flip this, I see a south polarity. So it also really helped me to visualize um, what was going on uh, with the magnetic fields interacting with the bolts. So I'll show you that really quick. So what really helped me to visualize what was going on here was to look at these 16 magnets in a circle and essentially open up the circle and lay down the magnets into a line. Uh, so that ends up looking like this. We see that one end of the line is the zero degree mark of the circle and one end of the line is a 360 degree mark of the circle. Um, and we've got our 16 magnets with alternating poles. Each magnet accounts for 22.5 uh, degrees of the circle since there are 16 magnets. And we're going to call this our input gear. So then we introduce our uh, 10 steel segments. And remember the segments act as transmitters of sorts. They, they transmit whatever field the input gear is giving them. Um, so that ends up looking like this. Um, so the each segment has adopted the field of whatever magnet is closest to it on the input gear. And notice that some of the segments adopt no field because they're equidistant to a north and a south magnet. Uh, so if we look at the other side of the of the steel segments, basically the output gear, what we end up seeing is a field with four poles. Um, I, it might look like five poles, but uh, see on either end the red pole is being cut in half. Uh, those meet together and they form one pole. So we end up having uh, two south and two north poles. Um, each pole accounts for 90 degrees of the circle. So what we find is that uh, if we were to 
invert the polarity of each magnet on the input gear. So it would that it looks like that. Um, obviously, each segment would have its polarity inverted, uh, and each pole would have its uh, each pole on the output side would have its polarity inverted. So basically, what we've done is we've turned a 22.5 degree rotation on the input side into a 90 degree rotation on the output side and 90 degrees divided by 22.5 we end up seeing that every rotation on the input side uh, ends up being four rotations on the output side uh, so that's why we have a four pole magnet on the outside because uh, 16 magnets and 10 steel segments ends up being ends up generating a uh, four pole output so we see that the number of segments is absolutely crucial. Um, without the right number of segments, this uh, system wouldn't work. But surprisingly, uh, the number of segments is actually pretty easy to calculate. You just average your number of magnets, and that'll tell you the average the number of magnets between the input and output gears, and that will tell you the number of segments that you need. Um, so obviously, 16 plus 4 is 20. 20 divided by 2 is 10, so 10 steel segments. But, uh, so it makes it pretty easy to calculate what you need your ratios to be for a given gear ratio. Let's say that I wanted a 8 to 1 ratio instead. I could do uh, 16 magnets still on the outside, and then I could do 2 magnets on the output gear. Um, so 16 plus 2 is 18. 18 divided by 2 would be 9 segments. So if I were to have 9 steel segments instead of 10, and then 2 magnets on the uh, output side, this would work perfectly as a uh, 8 to 1 ratio instead of a 4 to 1 ratio. So, yeah, this ends up being uh, pretty cool.